Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to start with a modified burpee. Now, this may sound intimidating to you, but it's, it's easier than it sounds. So, all you're going to do is start in a standing position, lower down, step your feet back one at a time, and come back up. That's your modified burpee. All right, let's do 10 of them. That was one. Now, alternate which foot you step back with. So you're just going to step back into a plank and come back up to standing. If 10 are too many, just do five. If it's too much to lower down to the floor like this, you can lower down to a step or a bench or something like your coffee table to take it, take it down a level and make it a little bit easier. Three more, I think. I lost track already. Try to keep those elbows straight. Keep your hands directly beneath your shoulders. And switch which feet you step back with. Okay, you just did burpees. Okay, next we're gonna lower down and do one-legged bridges. So we're really gonna get those hamstrings and glutes today. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm gonna turn this way. And we'll start like we've started other bridges in the past. I want you to start with a nice flat back, pushing into the floor, hands beside your hips. Then we're gonna push up into a bridge, but I want one leg out straight like this. So you're just gonna go back and forth if this is too much, go ahead and just do a two-legged bridge. That's okay. But I wanted to add a little bit of a challenge for anyone who is ready. Pushing through that heel, the one that is doing the work. All right, that's 10. Now we're going to switch. You want to stick those hips towards the ceiling. Keep your hips nice and level and really push through this heel. See, my toes aren't down at all. If you find yourself getting a hamstring cramp, stop and stretch like that. And again, if one leg is too much, stop and just do a two-legged bridge. And 10. Great. Okay. Now we're going to do an upper body exercise. We're going to do a shoulder press. Now, if you remember, <clears throat> when we've done these in the past, if you do have any back pain, do these seated. Do them on a ball or do them um, just seated on a bench or a, a chair. Start with them. Start with the dumbbells right at your shoulders, and we're going to press up. Start back a little bit. So I want you to do... Something to challenge your balance just a little bit. I'm doing a tandem stance. But if you feel like you're falling or you're not able to do the exercise correctly, just stand with a good base of support. And 10. Good. Okay. Remember, when you're transitioning those weights is when you have the Many times is what is the potential to be injured. So bend your knees, keep your core engaged, um, keep mindful of your body so that you don't get hurt when you do those transfers. Next, we're going to do step ups. <clears throat> so I'm going to use this kettlebell in one hand. You can use a dumbbell, you can use a gallon of water, but by using one hand, you engage your core more to stay upright and keep everything level. So we're just going to step up and step down. If you don't have a step like this in your house, you can use a step stool. Uh, not a step stool, but like a little, a little step. Um, I demonstrated that in another video. You can use the bottom stair of your stairwell. The other thing you can do is just go up and down your stairs. So after you do 10 on one side, then we're going to 
to switch, and I'll switch my kettlebell as well. Now remember also, if you need a little bit of balance for this, do it next to a railing, the countertop. Most stairs have railings. And make sure you're doing it on the side, holding the kettlebell on the side, away from where the railing is. So I would have switched sides here so I could hang on with this hand if I needed it for support. Okay, great. If you need to, you can alternate, you know, right, left. Um, if, you have, if it hurts your knees too much to do one whole side. And then just switch hands after about 10 so that you work your core equally while doing that. Okay, next we're going to lower down and do a side plank. So I want you to do this on your elbow. And we're going to start with your elbow directly beneath your shoulder. That's important for your shoulder to stay stable and stay in a safe position. And then I'm going to show you how to start with your knees bent. So if you're going to start with this plank, you want a straight line from your shoulders to your knees or your feet, depending on where you end up here. So this is the first progression. And if this feels okay, you can straighten out that top leg. And if that feels okay, you can stagger your feet. And you want your top leg in front. So come up into that side plank. And really think about keeping your chest open and your hips open. You want a nice straight line here. And then if that feels okay, you can stack your feet as well. That's the hardest part. That's sort of the hardest section here. So you can do any one of those along that continuum. Okay, so that was about 30 seconds. So you want to hold it for um, <clears throat> as long as is challenging for you, but not to the point where you're going to hurt yourself. So I always say 30 seconds to start, um, but sometimes it's 15 seconds to hold this, especially side planks are really hard. So again, I'm just going to start doing them. So you hold them wherever you feel is appropriate for you. So up on your knees or one foot extended or your feet staggered. Remember that top leg, that top foot is in front to give you that support that you need and keep those shoulders open, keep those hips open. It's pretty common to kind of adjust like this. Keep those shoulders open. Okay, and the last one is stacking those feet and then holding that in that good, straight supported position for a good 15 or 30 seconds, and if 30 seconds isn't long enough, you can always hold it longer. I'm talking long enough. You can keep holding it longer. Okay, the last one, we're going to do a little balance. Fit ball tip over. Okay, we've done this one before. It's been a while. But you're just going to stand on one leg and tip forward. So your goal is to keep a straight line from your the top of your head through the heel of the foot that's coming up. So you can start here with your with the ball out in front of you. Or if you really need more of a challenge, put the ball overhead. And you I want you to come up into like a straight line, but if you really need more of a challenge, you can go all the way down to the floor and then all the way back up. So Find where that good challenge lays for you, lies for you, and we'll do five on each side, nice and slow. If you do this next to, like I'm doing it here over this bench, but that's just so I can see you, but you could do it over a bench like this, having something as a goal, instead of just doing it with the floor in front of you, can really help. It just helps with that balance. It helps with your kind of your mind to think that there's something there that's going to catch you. Okay, now we're going to switch hands or switch feet. So I just did 
my right leg. Now I'm going to switch to my left. Slowly tipping forward. You can keep it right in here to begin. You can raise that ball up. Really thinking about keeping a straight line though from the top of your head through the heel of that foot that's coming up off the ground. Now this is challenging your balance. It's challenging your core because you're having to hold this thing. You may feel it in your arms having to hold this ball, but it's also getting your hamstring. So we're getting your hamstrings a couple times today with that bridge and then with this tipping over, that your hamstrings really have to engage to hold you in that position. One more. All right, good. I like that one, it gets a lot of different muscle groups. Okay, we're gonna go back to that modified burpee. So, let's see. I'll show you how to do it with like a step or something. So I'll use my step here. So standing, going down, pressing your hands, pressing one foot back, and standing back up. And remember, we're gonna alternate which foot you stand back up with. And if, like I said, if it is too much to go down to the floor, do this, use a step, or a bench, or even a kitchen chair if you have it. If you use a chair, make sure it's up against a wall or something so it doesn't move when you do this. But whatever you do, it's the same motion, and you just want to make sure your hands are directly beneath your shoulders. It'll be much easier on your shoulders. Just step back into a plank, and then step back up. Let's do one more. I lost track of how many we did, but. Okay, great. Next, we're going to do those one leg bridges. So, on the floor. If you remember which one you did last time first, try to start with the other, other leg this time. If you don't remember, it doesn't really matter. It's just good to mix it up. I don't remember which one I started with. So, we're going to come up, lower down. Remember, you want to keep those hips stable. Drive your weight through that supporting heel. You don't want to be pushing through your toes. Push through your heel. Drive your hips towards the ceiling. Two more. And this leg is really just staying stable. I'm not lifting it or anything. It's just staying stable and rising and lowering with my body. If this is too much, if you're getting a cramp, or if you're really wobbling all over the place trying to do this single leg bridge, just do a two leg bridge. You're working the same muscles, it's just less intense. Two more. Okay, great. Stretch out those hamstrings afterwards. Remember to do that stretch video after so that you can get all those muscle groups stretched out. Okay, next we're going to do shoulder press. Remember when we pick up those dumbbells, we're using good form. Bracing with our core, bending our knees, not bending at your back. I'm going to do a good tandem stance while I do this. If you have any shoulder pain, try bringing it to the front. that still bothers your shoulder, just stop. Don't do this one and then message me and I'll give you a separate exercise to do here. And also remember if this hurts your back, do it seated. And then knowing that you have back pain going into this, just start it seated. Don't try to do it standing. Okay. Step ups. <clears throat> so if I were to do it somewhere where I could hang on, I would hold the weight in the hand away from the support. So I'm going to start <clears throat> like this. Remember, you can 
go up and down your stairs, that's even more of a challenge because then you have to go, go down as well. And that's a really good eccentric work on the quads. Many times that's where the knee pain is presented, as you know. So when the knee pain presents in the quads, it's typically going down, not up. So you can find a place in your house where you've got a step, somewhere where you can hang on like this, something that's sturdy. If you don't have a step like this, you can use a little step. Like I still have my steps from when the kids were little. And that works, you're working with the same muscles. The goal here though, you want to think about keeping those knees in line. I didn't mention this in the first one, but you want to think about when you come up, your knee stays straight in line. You don't want it caving in. If you find that your knee is caving in, that valgus maneuver, you want to really focus on pushing it out, keeping it straight so that your knee and your ankle and your hip all stay straight. I don't know. Three more, I say. Okay. Set that weight down properly. Now we're going to do a side plank. <clears throat> I'm going to start on this side this time. So remember, I'll take you through each progression. You start at whichever progression you feel is appropriate. The other thing is you can start at a little bit harder progression. You can challenge yourself and then come down. So an, I'll show you an easy way to do that. As you're holding this, if you're going to start up here and you're not sure you can hold it for 30 seconds, start with five, four, three, two, one, and then drop that bottom knee. And then you're still working the same muscles, but you have a little extra support. You've, you've decreased that lever a little. And then remember the last one is here. And if that feels like too much, after five seconds, stagger your feet, drop a knee. You know, you can just break it down as the 30 seconds go on if you can't hold. So let's try that. I'll start at the, the hardest part here. And now I'm going to switch and put one foot in front. The whole thing, though, keeping those shoulders open, keeping those hips open. Okay, so I'm getting tired. I'm going to put one knee down. And then if this starts to feel like a little much, you can bring it here. But actually, this feels pretty doable. You can, you can play with it and decide where you are. Start a little bit harder. Start in one progression and then come down if you need to. Okay, the last one is the fit ball tip overs. So bring it back over here. Now remember, you can do it next to a bench or something. So you've got that kind of end point to see. It really helps with your, with your brain. So we'll do five on each side. Keeping a straight line from your, from the ball, from the top of your head, through that extending heel. And then bring that up higher if you need a little more challenge. That will challenge your core more and your arms, especially after those shoulder presses. Okay, let's switch. don't have a ball at home like this, you can use a, you know, any sort of an athletic ball. A kickball, a basketball, a soccer ball, or just doing it like this, pretending that you're holding a ball. It will still challenge. You're still working the same muscles. You're still challenging your balance and your core and your hamstring here. Good job, everybody. Remember to do those stretches. Really stretch those hamstrings today. We did a lot with your hamstrings and um, your shoulders.
So take some time, maybe circle them out. Take some deep breaths. And let me know what you think. All right, thanks everybody. I'll see you next time.